So me and Paul are up in sunny Sheffield today at Ward High Tech looking at the Hawachon 230A YMC. Paul, what are the main factors of this machine? Now this machine's um, available from stock and towards the end of this uh, video we'll tell you about some of the terms that you, you can uh, purchase these machines on which I know Ward High Tech are having some real success at the moment as a result of that. Um, but the machine itself, this is a single spindle machine with a Y-axis. The Huachon range, there's a, such a, a, a multitude of different models that you can have um, of these style of machines. But this one, as you see it here, straight single spindle Y-axis machine. So the first point I want to go into is it's not a normal spindle, is it? Well, not a normal spindle, but what have Ward High Tech done with this spindle that makes it exempt? Well, for you these know, customers? what we always try and do is look at some of the areas of the machines that are going to be of real interest to our yeah. viewers. And this is definitely one of those. Now, this is a, a P-motor spindle. Now, what that means is, is it's a real good kind of hybrid between having a gearbox and a direct drive spindle. Now, what everyone strives for on a machine of whatever size is as much power at the low end as you can have and as much speed as the top at the top end. But we all know that the laws of science mean that that's always not necessarily <laughs> possible without a yeah. gearbox. Um, but what you can have with this machine is, well, the best way to, uh, to illustrate it is that this spindle, let's say a 3,500 RPM spindle, to achieve maximum torque, you'd normally be looking at achieving that on a, on a, on a graph around about 1,000 yeah. RPM. This achieves it at 450 RPM, so you're much That's lower down. That's a huge down. difference, isn't it? It is, and imagine as a, as a machine shop wanting to be able to maybe put larger billets on, turn slower, but still achieve that high torque speed yep. in order to cut material then this, um, this, this spindle motor is ideal for that. It's a really important point. Really important that is, point. and it's great for Ward High Tech to be showcasing this because people are looking into lower torque and getting the, getting the big cuts and putting heavier materials on the machine. Yeah. 100%. Next thing I want to go into is their turret. So they've got driven tooling on there, but they've also got half indexes in. Yeah, so they've got half point indexing in here. You've got essentially 24 um, options where, or 24 tools, or 24 point indexing. In fact, yeah. you can have more than 24 tools because if you look here, what they're showing here is that you've got two turning tools actually on one side of the turret. Now, if, if you did have a sub spindle machine, you would be able to put two tools the other side as well, which means you could have up to four tools per yeah. station. Now, if you do the calculation on that, that means that you've got a lot of tools in, in a turret. Now, where this sort of solution fits is it's kind of and I hate to say it, but it's like a, a poor man's mill turn machine or, or, or a tool, an ATC machine where you've got a tool changer in the back because you want more tools. If you want more tools but you don't want to go for that style of machine, then this is perfect for it. Um, also, what you can do with a little bit of engineering ingenuity here, as you'll see, they've got their two tools, they've got their driven tools next to it. You're able to really um, create a turret with as many opportunities for machining on. And as you know, on a smaller turn part machine, you're likely to need more tools. 100%, and that means the programmer can create more complex parts. You don't have to take it off, turn it round, take the tools off, replace them. You can have your whole setup. And look, what people normally do is they have a setup sheet with your tools, your program. That's one job. Bish bash bosh. Done. Yeah. Next one. Next one point I want to go on onto is the hydraulic tail stock. Yeah, Tell me about that because I'm really excited to hear about Different to what we see a lot of the drag and, the drag and drop style <laughs> where you've got the, the, um, the slide where it comes in, picks it and pulls it to, to a point. There's two, there's two points here on this that make this, in, in my opinion, a little bit different. It's the fact it's faster. So yeah. with it being programmable, you can, hydraulically driven, you can get it to the front face of the, the part quicker. The second thing, and maybe more importantly, is that it's easier for an operator to use and less risk involved. With the drag and drop, there's the opportunity to be able to have a collision. Didn't or not like it. Yeah. Didn't like it. And the, it was the bane of my life, to be fair, when you did it, because you were constantly looking in, making sure it doesn't hit. But with a hydraulic one, you've got a servo motor on there as well, haven't you? Yeah, well, this is a hydraulic, and, and you can have the option of a servo to make it make it even quicker. So it's quite, quite an area of, of advantage, I feel, on, on the machine. Yeah, 100%. Next thing I want to go on to is this behind me so talk to me about this because this is like gold having one of these on a lathe and for me as a programmer myself and I know you at home especially as I'm a woman I've got a bit smaller arm so when I'm in the machine trying to reach the east stop over here is a bit of a nightmare yeah it's it's a fail safe it's great you can go into the machine you can have that in your hand we've all done it we've set tools we've been doing things indexing turrets whatever it might be 
and you need to hit the emergency stop yeah. and, and you, you might miss it. You know, with this, that's not going to happen. And it's, it's protecting um, your, your staff in some senses. It's giving them a little bit more security in, in what they're trying to do. So it's a, it's a little feature, but, but it's important. It will, go, it will go a long way because I know some machines, sometimes they just have a button, which is like where you can override um, the system. And when I'm in the machine, trying to get my arm around to be able to then move the machine and try and see what I'm doing at the same time is a nightmare. Yeah, and how often do we, do we look at machines and we do reviews, got this, got that, but we don't take these points that are very serious and they're very, very important to a user. And I know you, there's one more thing you're probably going to talk about here, but the, other, the last point I want to mention here is this chuck and the space between the outside diameter of the chuck and the tool set arm. arm. Yeah. How often do we see machines of this footprint where that is much closer to the chuck. And sometimes you and don't even have it in the machine. You have to manually put it in. Yeah. So this is this is an extra feature as well, where you can just have the tool arm come down. And that space gives you so much more access and more you, work, room to you, work with. It gives you wriggle room in a yeah. sense where you can go and get from an eight inch chuck, maybe up to a 10, and in, on a bigger watch on machine, I'm sure, I'm sure the same sort of standard applies. So the more space you've got in here, the more wriggle room that, that you've got. Yeah, definitely. One thing I want to talk about as well is behind me, we've got the manual guide eye, um, a huge asset to be able to program with. And I know they've got a program on here and we'll, we'll show you the part that they're turning. Uh, you could do it on a CAD CAN system, but to be able to program it on your machine, offline, online, is just a great asset and like we talk about we're saying we're talking about these um things on the machine which will improve manufacturing as a whole on the machine not just it's it, they're, they're great technologies to have no they will improve the way your company works and the way the machine works and, and you've got experience of, of using these sort of systems more than me the only the only area that i can really gravitate to is the simulation side in a sense where when you are starting to add more tools into the process, you are starting to do more operations in one. The more you can see what's going to happen, the better. Now, I know there are certain limitations in some instances, but those things, the graphical element is The important. graphical element is huge, and to be able to run the part as well, um, in simulation, sorry, is great, because you can run it in fresh air, but you're not cutting that material, are you? you you're ghosting over and you're thinking, hmm, yeah, that may work. With this, it will be able to show you, oh, you can see whether the holes are, you can see whether your dimensions are correct. So to be able to do this instead of wasting material, wasting your tool life as well, wasting cycle time, you're going to yeah. get more, more, more effort and more out of the machine. Now, why don't you ask me when, how much one of the, well, I don't know how much they're going to cost, but when I'd have to pay for it, because that has to be one of the, the biggest, um, let's say, points of this particular Well, video. wouldn't you have to pay for it when you, when you go in and sign the contract? Well, this is the great thing here with Ford High Tech. Now, these machines, not just this, but machines that you're gonna, you'll probably see on our videos, they're doing a buy now, pay May 2022. Now, wow. don't forget, we're in May 2021 now. <laughs> now. That means that a machine like this can not only improve your, your production, your method of, or your creation of components, your method of manufacture, it also means it can do that without you having to pay for it. So this is a really good way of, of changing how you make things, of, of, of investing in your company without parting with your hard, hard earned cash. In fact, earn before you pay. Well, do, the machine can be making money before you've even paid for it. So imagine, imagine getting the um, parts that you get off your subcontractor or whatever, and it's, it's paying for itself. It by is. the time you've got it dropped off, paying for itself, by the time May 2022 20, comes around, there you go. Bish bash bosh. <laughs>